a lot of challenges but also a lot of opportunities for Daimler Truck. Congratulations on your listing today. What will be your biggest challenge over the next two years? First of all, certainly today it's a great day. Uh, a company going 100 years parallel uh, uh, split in a, in a very good way, uh, and being uh, having here the first trading day, it's like the finish line of a marathon. On the other side, we are right. We are in the, in the other race. We're in the race of, of ending the year, uh, well, of starting 2022, where we have a monster demand from the markets, but uh, have to double shortages from the supply industry, and then certainly the. the the, the transformation to zero emissions in the next uh, 10, 15 years ahead of us. It's a big. So, uh, uh, Mr. Dam, talk to me a little bit about, you know, the, the challenges ahead in terms of what the share price will do. Everything will depend on whether you're able to deliver financials. What makes you confident that you'll be able to, you know, deliver these efforts with a lot more success that has been had in the last 10 years? I mean, first of all, we, we, we are a rock solid company still. Yeah, even uh, uh, if, uh, and, we, we, and we have a lot of potential, upward potential, but on, on the base we start, uh, it's not a, not a restructuring case, it's a rock solid case, it's not a world class mm -hmm. case. But we started about two years ago with a lot of areas of improvement. We see the, the, the first great results already here in 2021 with a lot of upside potentials for the years to come. Uh, and, and having all the capital market days in November, our investor talks, our analyst talks. I think the markets share that confidence uh, that we are able to deliver uh, what we announced. And we do that with an unparalleled yeah. transparency in the future. So everything is, in my opinion, working so fine in that area. Um, Mr. Dam, how, you know, what are the main milestones for you to actually reduce your dependence on the U.S. markets? Sorry, uh, uh, can you repeat the question? Difficult from the audio. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was asking, how do you reduce dependence on profits generated in North America? What are the kind of key milestones that you're expecting there? I mean, uh, number one is certainly uh, to bring up uh, the European business uh, to what the Mercedes brand, which is one of the most distinguished brands here in commercial vehicles, uh, can deliver. And as I said, 2019 was a kind of a low point, and since then uh, we did really, uh, big strides forward, and we will continue that. So I'm absolutely sure that pretty soon Mercedes Benz will be on a similar level, that, like the Freightliner brand in North America. And then we have two very strong bases, uh, and then the rest is our our international business, which is doing well as well. Mr. Dam, do you expect uh, consolidation in the industry, given the massive transformation when it comes, for example, to fuel cell trucks, but also battery power trucks? No, I see the, uh, the industry is already pretty much consolidated. We are basically four global groups. Packer, Volvo, uh, Traton, and then Daimler, by far the largest one. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty confident that we'll see we'll see those competitors battling both on the conventional powertrain as well as on the fuel cell and the battery electric car. When are you expecting the first full autonomous Daimler truck on the road? Good question. Uh, stay tuned. We're pretty much jazzed up, I would say. Uh, somewhere by the mid of this decade. Uh, I mean, on the road they are already. Yeah, the big question is uh, when do we have them on the road without an engineer sitting nearby and watching. But on the road they are already. We're driving pretty big miles in the southern states of the United States already. Um, Mr. Dam, can you give us a little bit of color on this historic spin-off? Who came up first with the idea? How did it pan out? I mean, the idea is basically a 20-year journey. You know, we, uh, we realized over and over that uh, luxurious passenger cars and trucks have very little in common, both in technology, in customer base, and the way how you market those products. Uh, so we first uh, had what we call sales dedication at the beginning of the decade. About four years ago, we started uh, to split legally the companies, which was in, in Europe quite an undertaking because we were going 100 years in one single company. And there are a lot of things, uh, nitty gritty stuff, which had to be so solved and resolved. And then about a year ago, we had the first ideas. And then in February, uh, our supervisory board gave us a green light. And then basically the marathon and started in February, ending today after nearly 10 months of intense work of hundreds of people to make everything possible and, happy, and happening.